Stephanie, everybody, happy Sabbath. We're going to start our church service now, and I've invited Damien to pray for us. So let us uh, kneel in prayer for those of us who can. Let us kneel. Gracious, loving, heavenly Father, we are so thankful and grateful that you have given us the Sabbath. We know, my Lord, a time is coming. The controversy is between man-made laws against God's commandments. Help us, O oh Lord, to establish our faith in Christ. For it is in him that we live and breathe and forevermore. We do pray my, for the aid of the Holy Spirit to bring conviction to our heart that every known sin that you will help us to put away, that we will be filled with the dwelling of our Lord Jesus Christ in us through the aid of the Holy Spirit, that we may think and act accordingly, according to your word, according to your law. Help us, my Lord, to establish our faith. For you are the way and the truth and the life, for there is no other means that we can have salvation but in Christ alone. Help us to be the light of the world. Let darkness be dispelled from our lives, that the light may shine, that we may win souls to, the, to God, to, thy, to the kingdom that is to become. Help us to be faithful in all things that we do. Help us that we can share the gospel message to a world that is perishing. We see what is happening today. We see the signs. We pray that you will help thy people who are gathering upon this Sabbath to be faithful to you, that they lift up their voices in adoration, in praises, in hymns and psalms, in praising our Almighty. A time is coming that every cool thing will be, be open, and only those who are faithful will be able to stand against this great tribulation that is going to come upon us. Christendom is thinking that they will be, uh, they will be secretly raptured, but they will be in a surprise when we have to go through the tribulation. And so, Lord, we pray that you will help us to lift up the, uh, the uh, banner of Emmanuel and that we may indeed be a light and help us to share the last message of warning to a world that is perishing. Mm -hmm. Help us to uh, be a light to shine in the midst of darkness. And we also pray for a double portion of your spirit to fall upon Michael and Sally as they break the bread of life to thy people. And as it be uh, uploaded to the YouTube, we pray that those who watch will, be, will receive a blessing. So we pray that you will abide with us, that you will tabernacle with us as the word of God is being broken to us in this present hour. Thank you, Lord, for hearing our petition. Thank you for answering. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Simon. Amen. Thanks for that, Shelley. That was very interesting information. It's amazing what a bee can do. Might share a few things after the sermon about, about bee pollen and bees as well and honey. But now I'll get ready to set up my, my presentation. Okay. So what I've what I'm planning to do until the end of the year is a, another series, brothers and sisters, and I'll share a bit more as we go through the or when we get to the end of the message, I'll share a bit more about when I'm going to be doing these presentations. But um this is the beginning. So the seven seals and the seven churches. In this series, we will be looking at the seven seals and the seven churches in the light of Bible prophecy and the history of the church since Christ ascended to heaven in AD 31. We will look at each seal and the corresponding, sorry, I'm going to get rid of this silly thing. I don't know why it did either. Anyway. 
Danny or is that Roy? We will look at each seal and the corresponding church. We will look at the meaning of the church name, the title of the giver, encouragement, rebuke, admonition and instruction given, Reward that will await those who heed the letters. See how each church and seal relates to a different era of a Christian dispensation. And see how each message relates to the church today. So introduction. So let's just bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray as we go through this little introduction to the seven seals and the seven churches that your Holy Spirit will be with us. We ask that you will give us wisdom and understanding from your word, that we may understand the messages and especially what we're going to learn today, Lord, and what a wonderful saviour we have in, in Jesus Christ. So bless us now, we pray in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. So the seven seals are found in Revelation chapter 6 to 8. The seven churches are found in Revelations chapter 2 and 3. But before we look at these chapters, we must first look at chapters 1, 4, and 5 to want to identify an important point. So the revelation of Jesus Christ, Revelation 1, verse 1. First of all, we need to know that this book is about Jesus Christ. What is it about him that we need to know? Well, Revelation 1 verse 7 says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. Jesus said in John chapter 14 verse 3, I will come again. So Jesus came once before, and now he is telling us that he is coming again the second time. Who then is this person called Jesus Christ? Well, Revelation 1, 1 and 2 says this, The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Now, we will not dwell much upon these verses, just to point out the progression of and who are involved in the giving of the revelation of Jesus Christ. They are God, Jesus Christ, his angel, John, and his servants. In Revelation 1 verse 9, we read this, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. Who is this person? He is described as the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending, who is and which was and which is to come, and he is the Almighty. In chapter 4, it says, And immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. And the four beasts rest not day nor night at night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power, for thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. That's Revelation 4, verses 2, 3, 8 and 11. So here we see he who was and is and is to come is called the Lord God Almighty. And he is upon a throne in heaven and he looks like a jasper and a sardine stone and he created all things. So it is God the Father, the Almighty. At the end of Revelation, God the Father says, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Revelation 21, verse 6. Now going back to chapter 1, John says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, 
and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. Revelation 1, 10 and 11. Here again, John sees he who is the Alpha and Omega. But this time he is described as the first and the last. John then goes on to say in verse 12 that he turned to see the voice that spake with me and being turned he saw seven golden candlesticks and in the midst of the seven candlesticks one like unto the Son of Man. Revelation 1 verse 13. So when John turned to see the voice of the Alpha and Omega he says he saw the Son of Man. John then sees the description of the Son of Man, who is clothed with a garment down to the foot and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. And his voice is the sound of many waters, and he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth, was as the sun shineth in his bright in his strength. Revelation 1, 13 to 16. Who is this Son of Man? Further on in Revelation, John says, And I looked and behold, a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Revelation 14, 14. Here John sees the Son of Man sitting upon a white cloud, and in chapter 1, John said that Jesus cometh with clouds. Further on in the Revelation, John says, And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and he had in his head, and on his head were many crowns. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Revelation 19, 11 to 16. John sees someone upon a white horse coming with the armies of heaven, and they are clothed in fine linen, white and clean, and also riding upon white horses. And the description of this person is similar to how John saw the Son of Man clothed. What are some of the names given to this person? Faithful and true, the word of God, and King of kings and Lord of lords. In Revelation 19, 19, we read this. The beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Who else did John see the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies making war against? Revelation 17, 12 to 14 says this. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but have received power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind and shall give their power and their strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of lords. And king of kings. So they are making war against the Lamb. Who is the Lamb? In chapter 5, John saw the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David. Revelation 5, verse 5. Who is this person? Verse 6 says, And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as it had been slain. He is the lamb who had been slain. Further on in the Revelation, John says that he is the 
lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Revelation 13, verse 8. Going back to chapter 5, John says of the lamb, Thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made unto us unto our God kings and priests. Revelation 5, verse 9 and 10. And back in chapter 1, John says of Jesus Christ these words, Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. Revelation 1, verse 5 and 6. So the lamb who was slain is Jesus Christ. Another word for slain is is dead. I'm sorry, I've got this thing up here and it's just not going away. It doesn't matter because the bottom's going to say the same thing. I know it should go away, but it's not for some reason. Another word for slain is kill or dead. And speaking of the Son of Man, John says he heard him say, Fear not, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and death. Revelation 1, 17 and 18. So the Son of Man was dead or slain. Therefore, we must conclude that Jesus Christ is the Son of Man and the lame Lamb that was slain. And moreover, coming to this conclusion, Jesus Christ must also be the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David. And he also is the Alpha and Omega. And at the end of Revelation, we read, Jesus saying, And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Revelation 22, 12 and 13. And speaking of the wrath of God, John says, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned, and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come. Revelation 11, 17 and 18. And whose wrath is it? Revelation 6, verse 16 says, The wrath of the Lamb. So it is the wrath of the Lamb. Therefore, we must conclude that not only is Jesus Christ the Son of Man, the Lamb, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, and the Alpha and the Omega, but that he is also the Lord God Almighty. Now, it seems that Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, the Lamb, has the same characteristics and titles of God the Father. Jesus said of himself, I and my Father are one, John 10, verse 35. And he also declared to the Jews, before Abraham was, I am, John 8, verse 58. So here in these verses, Jesus is declaring himself as the I am, the Lord God Almighty, <coughs> and equal or one with God the Father. Mark says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Mark 1, verse 1. Now, what are some more characteristics of Jesus Christ that we find in chapter 1? Verse 5 says, And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth. Okay, now we have seen who Jesus Christ is. Let us now look at his role with the seven seals and the seven churches. John says, 
The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest, now this is Jesus speaking, the mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks, which thou sawest, are the seven churches. Revelation 1, 20 and 21. So when John sees the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, walking in the midst of the seven candlesticks, it means that he is in the midst of the seven churches, his servants, or us. In 7 Bible Commentary 956, Alan White says this, Christ walks in the midst of his churches through the length and breadth of the earth. He looks with intense interest to see whether his people are in such a condition spiritually that they can advance his kingdom. He is present in every assembly of the church. He knows those whose hearts can be filled with the holy oil that they may impart it to others. Those who faithfully carry forward the work of Christ, representing in word and deed the character of God, fulfill the Lord's purpose for them, and Christ takes pleasure in them. Amen. And what does Jesus say to John to do? Verse 11, he says, What thou seest, write in a book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. And John also says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia, verse 4. And at the end of the, the revelation, Jesus says to John, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. Revelation 22, verse 16. So who are these seven churches which are in Asia that John is writing to? Revelation 1.11 says, What thou seest, write in the book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. So they are Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. And here is a map of Turkey, or the western part of Turkey, where these churches, or where these towns used to be, or the churches as well. Now let us go to the seven <coughs> seals and see what Jesus is doing in regards to them. John says, And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne, that's God the Father, a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. Revelation 5 verse 1. So he sees God the Father having in his right hand a book that is sealed with seven seals. He then sees a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? Verse 2. And sadly, John wept because there was no man able to open the seals. Verses 3 and 4. <clears throat> but then one of the elders said to him, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. Revelation 5, verse 5. <clears throat> and who did we see the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of, was the lion of the tribe of Judah, or the root of David? John says, And I beheld and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God, sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, <coughs> having every one of them harps. And they sang a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. Revelation 5, 6 to 9. So it is the Lamb, Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, 
and the Son of God. And then John sees, And I saw when the Lamb had opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Revelation 6, verse 1. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Jesus the Lamb is able to loose and open the seven seals of the book and we are invited to come and see what it says. So we have seen who Jesus Christ is, that he is the Son of Man, the Lamb, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, and the Alpha and the Omega, and he is also the Lord God Almighty, the Son of God. <clears throat> and we have seen that he is, he is the one who is walking in the midst of the seven candlesticks, the seven churches, his servants, us, and writing to them. And hallelujah, and praise God, and amen. We have seen that he is able to loose and open the seven seals of the book, and he invites us to come and see what it says. And why does Jesus write to the seven churches? And why is he going to loose and open the seven seals of the book so we may come and see what it says? The Revelation says, Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Revelation 1 verse 2. And in verse 19, Jesus says, Write the things which thou hast seen and the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. So John was told to write of all the things that he saw, which shall be hereafter. And why is this, or why was this? The angel said these words in Revelation 22, verse 6, And he said unto me, These sayings are, the faithful, are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. And in verse 10, the angel said, Seal not the saying of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. Because these things must shortly be done, because the time is at hand. And what time is at hand? The time when he cometh with clouds, his second coming. And Jesus says to us, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Revelation 22, verse 7. And this is why at the beginning of the Revelation, in chapter 1, then a benediction is pronounced. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. Revelation 1, verse 3. And I pray that as we go through these seven seals and seven churches, we will truly be blessed as we read, hear or understand and keep those things or words that we see Jesus write to us. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we have had a brief introduction into the book of Revelation and the seven seals and the seven churches. And we've seen your son. We've seen who Jesus Christ really is. He is our saviour. He is the lamb. But even more, more importantly, he is God. He is your son, the son of God, the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. The one who died for us and shed his precious blood so that we may have forgiveness of sins and be washed from our sins and cleansed by, by his blood and stand before you forgiven and cleansed from our sins. And we thank you for that. We also have the promise that Jesus said, I will come again. But in the meantime, Father, we have had 2,000 years of history. And, Father, in that history you've revealed to us in the book of Revelation through the seals and the churches, the history of your church its trials, its, its mistakes, its victories, 
And we pray as we go through this series of seven seals and seven churches that you will bless us with wisdom and understanding as you were promised in your word in the revelation and that we will learn the lessons and by your grace not make the same mistakes that were made by your people in the past. So bless us now, dear Father, and thank you for your Holy Spirit revealing these things to us through your word. And thank you for your angels who minister to us as well because they are as deeply involved in our in the work of our salvation as they are ministers to us and they are eager to see us in the kingdom with them one day as well. So bless us now, dear Lord, and thank you for hearing this prayer. I pray in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to just stop the presentation of the recording now. And then I'm going to show you a couple of things before we close.